Okay, another addition reaction. We're going to form halohydrins. This is where we're going to add X to one side and OH to the other. So the halo is in the X and the hydrin comes from the OH. Halo hydrins. Again, let's start with our really simple alkene. This is going to start, um, let, let's mix it, let, let's use I2. I haven't used I2 at all yet. We're going to, uh, this starts out looking like doing a dihalogenation. We treat it with, with a dihalide, I2, Br2, Cl2. The difference is we're going to use a different solvent. It's going to be water. So I2, let's write out the full structure so we can show the mechanism. The alkene attacks the iodine kicks out iodide from the other side, and then our iodine lone pair is going to turn around and, and attack that alkene. This forms, in this case, an iodonium ion. We're going to have iodide floating around. Um, I, iodonium ion, just like a bromonium ion, this is a really strong electrophile. And so we're going to react our strong electrophile with a nucleophile. In the past, we have always just taken our halide and had the halide attack. But there's a difference. We now have, are performing this in a solvent of water. And when I say solvent of water, I mean there's a lot of water around. There's a lot more water than iodide. So statistically speaking, when our strong electrophile is floating around in solution, the first thing it's going to encounter is a weakly nucleophilic water molecule, not an iodide. So water is going to do the ring opening of our iodonium ion. Water will, as the halides did, will attack at the more highly substituted carbon. It will break that carbon iodine bond. Note this iodine has a positive charge. It's begging for electrons and we're going to give it those electrons by breaking the CI bond. And What we get is an oxygen on one carbon and a halide on the other. Now our reaction's not over yet because we have this positively charged species. Um, we need to deprotonate our water or, or our oxygen. And we use water, which is the base that we have available to us. Um, you might say, well, if I want a base, just use hydroxide. You're not given hydroxide, so don't use hydroxide. You, you are given water, so we use water. And what we formed is a halohydrin because we've added a halide and we've added an OH. In this case, you know, when we have fancy, it's called an iodohydrin. But it's an example of a halohydrin. Note that if we did this on a cyclic alkene, we would um, form a product. This is so, so we saw that um, iodinations and halogenations give antiproducts. This will also give an antiproduct. So presumably on this alkene, we'd form the iodonium on the top face and then water would attack at the more highly substituted carbon from the bottom face. So what we get is our product. would be this. Our OH and I are the things that we added and they're anti to each other and so we get the anti product. Anytime we go through these three membered intermediates like an iodonium ion, we're always going to get an anti addition. Um, and so there is stereochemical control, there's regio control in the fact that the nucleophile always attacks at the more highly substituted carbon when we attack. We saw this in this top set example as well as the bottom example. So these are uh, halohydrins. These are common reactions that are encountered in chemistry.